Lazar appeared regularly on the radio and in concert, and began to study with Enrico Rosati here in New York, who was also the teacher of the great Benjamin Ajili. In 1947, Columbia artist Tim Lanza with soprano Francis Yen and bass baritone George mm -hmm. London formed the Belcanto Trio. They performed all over the U.S. and in Canada and in Mexico to great acclaim. In August of that year, tenor Ferruccio Tagliarini, who had recently made his mid debut, was scheduled to appear at the Hollywood Bowl, but he canceled. Lanza was suggested as a replacement by I. What you're going to hear next is a selection from the actual concert. It's the encore, and I'll let Mario introduce it. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we do the duet from La Boe by Puccini. Uh, 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 uh. success, but it marked a major turning point in Lanza's career. Once he started making films, it would be impossible for him to pursue his dream of becoming a great opera singer. There simply wouldn't be enough time to learn for their roles. He would make his opera debut in Pickering and Madame Butterfly with the New Orleans Opera in April of 1948, prior to work on his first film, The Midnight Kiss. But he would never again appear in opera. Although he never fulfilled his dream, Lanza did feel that his films, concert, appearances on radio, TV, and recordings introduced many to the world of opera and good music in general. In the end, Lanza became an ambassador for good music of all genres, and also was an inspiration for those that followed him. And many of today's great stars and the stars of the past 30 or 40 years have all cited Mario Lanza as their inspiration. And this concludes the lecture to the period that it was saved in the advertisement.